hello. Today I'm going to be presenting the food commodity case study. I've chosen to do the banana trade, but you can do about palm oil. I know that's one of them in the textbook. Um, so this is a case study for the AQA A level geography course. Um, in the topic global systems and global governance. Yes, okay. And this is a this one is a bit short, so I might be missing some information. I again do encourage to go and search for things as well. But this is sort of like the bare bones of what you need to know. Oh, okay. Here you go. So this is what the specification says. It's a very small part of the specification. Uh, so it says that it's supposed to know about world trade and at least one food commodity or one manufacturing product. I have one for, it's called Tata Steel. Um, I might make a video on it, but it's a very short case study. There's not much to say, but I'm thinking of making like a combination of short case studies as there are a couple in this um, topic, but this one is pretty short. Okay, so the overview is that overall, World trade in bananas demonstrates a number of relevant points about trade, especially in primary commodities. So, mass production in developing countries will have negative environmental consequences, such as growing on large monoculture plantations, which uh, have a negative effect because... Let me think... <laughs> I, I don't have the notes for this, but I do want to expand on it. So if there's a large monoculture plantation, the plants are more susceptible to disease because if they have the same um, DNA, meaning that they're more susceptible to diseases and that can be detrimental because if they lose the whole entire crop which has happened before I need to look into it which I, what I, what bananas exactly are beginning to get diseased maybe you can find that in the comments or I'll write it in the comments but I know there is one you can mention that it's a pretty good thing to mention but I've not mentioned it here okay uh there are 50 million tons of bananas grown a year, which is a lot of bananas. So TNCs such as Chiquita, uh, I think that's how you say it, who knows, uh, have a large degree of control of markets and can influence political decisions, exports being dominated by Latin American and Caribbean countries, which produce 17 million tons of bananas to export. Largest importers are the EU and the USA. 85% of the price paid by the end consumer stays in the richer countries and never reaches the producers who are most at risk by selling perishable fruits, which just means fruits that can get bad really easily. Like if you compare, for example, canned foods, they're not non-perishable you can store them for years and they'll be fine but with fruits like these a couple of days or a couple of now nah, weeks is a bit too much but a couple of days and you have to throw them away so a lot of food waste as well which can be an environmental issue um so 85 percent of the price is paid by the consumers so us uh, which are given to the TNC, where workers receive only 5% of the total value of bananas. Retailers manage to get 40%. So 
So bananas and fair trade. Quickly, I want to define what fair trade is. Uh, it is a global movement that aims to improve the economic and social conditions of farmers and workers in developing countries, uh, especially in countries such as LDEs or low developed economies. So bananas are UK's most popular fair trade product. Uh, so 40% of the market in supermarkets such as Sainsbury's, Waitrose and the cooperative or just co-op uh, only, only selling fair trade bananas. So uh, fair trade helps smaller scale producers, e.g. in the Caribbean and parts of Africa. This will counter the deterioration of conditions in banana production. So effects of banana trade on people. So large companies relocate plantations to West Africa for lower labour costs, weaker legislation and longer shifts. Unbearable heat. There's, yeah, there's unbearable heat there. Many workers fail to earn enough to cover basic needs. This stems from inadequate compensation from supermarkets, the distributors. So the banana trade war. Uh, trade wars began in the US and EU and lasted 20 years, ended in 2009. Uh, so the, the way it started is that the EU negotiated trade agreement with former colonies, 71 ACP countries, receiving preferential tariff-free imports quotas to supply EU markets. Um, this was done so that they can develop independently without overseas aid. The US TNCs that controlled the Latin American crop were supplying 75% of the EU market. Only 7% came from EU markets. So they already dominated the market. Uh, however, in 1922, the World Trade Organization filed a complaint where the EU was apparently constituting unfair trade, which in hindsight, technically. As a result, the US government imposed the WTO, which approved sanctions on some EU products. In 20, 2009, <laughs> The EU agreed to gradually reduce tariffs on Latin American bananas from 2012. Um, the tariffs went from 176 euros down to 75 euros per ton from 2012 to 2018. Um, the deal applied to other Latin American countries, increased change to oversupplying the EU market. Um, however, there are some concerns that for those uh, ACP countries that they won't be able to compete because of this, uh, this sanction because the La like Latin American Bernard is already dominating the market um, and because of their lack of power compared to the US and America and all that, there are some issues that um, they can dominate the market. Okay, that the that Latin American bananas will dominate the market. Okay, so the conclusion of this trade war is that the WTO will always support free trade against protectionist activities, even if it will help development. Um, power and control of food production have shifted away from growers and towards retailers in HDEs. More ethical, sustainable consumer markets are growing, but relatively slow and only in places that can afford products bought at a higher price. Yes, because what I failed to mention before is because because of obviously America being one of the most powerful countries, one of the richest countries, um, they are able to mark down their prices for the bananas, uh, which then allows them to compete more 
with um, the ACP countries like the Caribbean, the bananas and all that, um, which have to put their bananas at a higher price because, for example, if they are fair trade, because it gives more money to the farmers, so they need to mark up the price. But some people might not be able to um, buy these more expensive bananas or just don't want to. Okay, so here are some past exam questions. Granted, there haven't been many, which might show that you need to really revise this topic because it might come up. But I think there are some more six markers uh, from this topic, but I'd have to look a bit deeper. But these are two I've kind of fished out. Um, the figure two is on the other page here. Uh, thank you.